This is the Toro Powerplex 14 inch 40 volt max battery powered chainsaw model number 51880. This overview is really for new chainsaw users. Professional people that do this all the time can do a much better video for you. But this is for people like me that maybe this is your first chainsaw purchase and you're just trying to do uh, sawing of things around the house. In the past, I was using a handsaw to deal with those issues, and I found that over time that really became a strain. So I wanted to get a chainsaw to deal with those issues. But because I would only be using it a small number of times throughout the year, I wanted to make sure that whatever I bought was safe, that it was reliable, that it was easy to use, and uh, easy to store. I chose a battery powered chainsaw mainly again because my needs were very slight things around the house. If you're not using it all the time you have to be extra careful and to provide additional safety for myself I wanted to use one that had all the safety I could get so I chose the battery powered one uh, because as soon as you release that trigger it stops. Now my concern was that if you had a battery power chainsaw that it wouldn't be as powerful, that it wouldn't last long, you'd constantly be charging it and it would be a problem. I can say with this particular product that has never been a problem for me. It was amazingly powerful, handled all of my needs. I have never run out of battery power on any of the uh, little things that I tried to do around here and I've been out there cutting trees and different things for three hours and the battery still holds up. So for my needs, this was it. I'm sure there are a lot of great chainsaws out there, but this met the needs of a regular homeowner. Now a couple things you have to buy in addition to the chainsaw is number one, it does not come with any bar and chain oil when you get it, nothing. So it's important that you buy it before you uh, do anything with the chainsaw. This particular one, a brand I think I picked up at Home Depot, is like $6.50 for a quart and it lasts a very long time. Now there's two things you have to buy before using the chainsaw and they are chainsaw specific gloves and safety glasses. They also mention that you should have a mask on and I'm sure everybody has a mask these days but it's critical that you have chainsaw gloves and safety glasses before you use the chainsaw at all. Now, for new chainsaw users, I'm just going to tell you the components of this just so you know what I'm referring to when we do the video. Obviously, there's the chain. This is called the guide bar. Then you have the oil window, shows you the level of oil in the chainsaw. You have the oil cap right here. You have your front handle. You have your battery pack, your trigger lock, your trigger, your guide bar cover, and then if you flip this thing around, here's your chain tensioning knob and the wing nut here that you use to remove this cover to change the guide bar or the chain. This is the chain brake. It stops the chain from going around when you don't want it to. So in most cases, it's going to be in the stop position. But when you're ready to actually make some cuts, that way you're at that point, you're going to pull it to the go position. Now, I have labeled these with a label maker. If you buy one of these, you won't see that stop and go. But I did it that way because I was afraid since I used this chainsaw, you know, only rarely throughout the year that I might forget what the position is. So to remind myself, I labeled stop and go. So in this point, it's in the stop position. When I'm ready to cut, you just pull it back and then it's ready to go. And the idea is there is if you get a kickback on the uh, chainsaw when you're using it, that it forces your hand when this comes back to push this forward and stop it. So it becomes a little bit of a safety device to put the brakes on the chain if this thing should kick back up at you. The black metal piece there is the guide bar that the chain is going around. Now they tell you in this that of course this saw is for cutting tree branches and logs and beams of a diameter no longer than the cutting length of the guide bar. So though this is a 14 inch guide bar, in reality you can't really cut a tree trunk that is more than 11 to 11 and a half inches. So you want to keep the tree trunk 
diameter basically within this area here. If you were cutting a much larger tree, then obviously you need a bigger chainsaw that has a bigger guide bar and a bigger uh, chain on it. But for around the house, this worked for me because most of the trees that I'm involved with might have a six to eight inch, maybe 10 inch diameter, and this worked very well. The nice part also on the end, they clearly marked the tip of the chainsaw in yellow, as you can see there, because most times when you're getting kickback from a chainsaw when you're using it is because you got too close to the tip. So that yellow warning area really is helpful to me, and I always make sure that when I'm cutting anything, I'm uh, closer to that Toro logo area and not getting real close to the tip there, and I've never experienced any kickback. Okay, in general, to use the chainsaw, all you have to do is step one, make sure all the vents are clear of any debris or dust. That's very important. Step two, put the battery in. Step three, remove the protective cover. Step four, put the chain brake in operating procedure. Then when you're ready to go, you would simply press the trigger lock and then pull the trigger and hold the trigger lock in and then it's good to go. For your safety, it's always important to do these following four things before you use the chainsaw. It doesn't take long, but it's important that you do them. Number one, check the chain tension. Make sure that chain is correct. Number two, clean and check all the components. Make sure there's no debris or dust or anything blocking the vents, anything that could cause the chainsaw to overheat. Number three, check the oil level. The oil is critical to working uh, this chainsaw properly. And finally, check the chain brake. You want to make sure that when it's in stop, that that chain stops, and when it's in go, that it can go. So those are very critical before you start using the chainsaw every time. Okay, just so you can hear how this sounds. Again, what you want to do is make sure your battery is locked in, and you've checked the oil and the tension on the chainsaw, and then to get it going, you simply pull the chain brake back, hold in the trigger lock, and pull the trigger. To stop, just release and put this again in the stop position and you're good to go. This is the battery charger that comes with the chainsaw. Now there are two lights on the front. There's one here and one's here and it, this tells you what they indicate. So if both are red, it means that the battery is charging. If this one's red and this one's green, it means that the battery is charged 100%. If this is red and this is yellow, it means that the battery is too warm. You have to let it cool down for it to work a little bit. And then if this is red and this is flashing red, it means you have to replace your battery. Now they tell you for this battery charger to operate correctly, you must do it within these temperatures that are listed here. That's 32 degrees Fahrenheit to 104 degrees. They say if you're outside that range, it could take longer for the charger to charge up the battery. Now they tell you when you get it, it has a very limited charge, so you have to charge it before you use it. I did that with mine. It did not take long to charge, maybe an hour maybe anywhere between an hour and two hours, but it fully charged very quickly, so it was not an issue. Now on the back of this also, there are mounting uh, screw areas if you want to mount it onto a wall, but in my case, I just have it on a shelf. So to make this uh, thing work, simply take your battery, and as I mentioned before, there's the, the ridges there, and it just slides right in here. There's no switch or anything, you just kind of put it on, press down till it clicks, and in this case, you'll notice it's green down here and red over there. So according to the chart, that means my battery is 100% charged and it's ready to go. And I really like this PowerPlex charging system because I also have a Toro uh, grass trimmer that is the same PowerPlex system. So I can use this battery to charge my trimmer and my chainsaw. And since I use my trimmer maybe once a week during the summer, and I use the chainsaw maybe once every two months, something like that, uh, one battery does me perfectly fine and it works really well. To insert the battery, basically you're gonna take this side with the ridges in here 
and when you look inside the battery pack you'll see the connections right there so you want to make sure that the ridges here are aligned with that so you're just going to take this battery and press it all the way down until you hear it click like that to remove it you're just going to pull this locking mechanism here back towards you and then pull it straight out to make sure that your battery is fully charged there is a button right here you just press it and you'll notice it's giving me four blue lights that means it's fully charged and obviously as it gets discharged it kind of works its way down it does not stay on because that would just use up the battery but if you want to check at any point time just push this and you'll see where it stands saw like this requires bar and chain oil and it's very critical that it is always filled with bar and chain oil. Now you fill the oil from here, you put this thing on the side and I'll show you that later, but there's also a little window here that tells you the fill level. So anytime you're using the chainsaw, you always want to check first to make sure that there is oil in this at the proper level. I always make sure that the battery is out of this. Anytime I'm working with the saw, you don't want it to accidentally start or create a problem, which is very difficult to do with a battery powered one but uh, I always make sure the battery is out, the thing is in lock position, and then you just turn this uh, to unscrew it, to put the oil in, and then put it back on. Okay, here's how you check the oil and add oil if necessary. So the first thing you wanna do is make sure your protective cover is on the blade of the chainsaw. You wanna remove your battery. So again, you pull this out, slide it right up. So now there's no chance of this thing going off. I have mine also in the stop position, but with stop position, the cover and the battery out, there's no way this thing is going to go anywhere. So the other thing you want to do is lay it on its side on a flat level surface, just like that. So what we're going to do now is we're going to turn the oil cap filter here counterclockwise and just take it off. Now you want to make sure when you do this, that there's no debris or anything like this. You don't want any sawdust or any wood chippings to get inside with the oil. So always make sure you're on a clean surface, flat and level, and there's nothing around it. Now it says in the instructions to add oil until the oil fills the window. And it says do not fill the chainsaw higher than the bottom of the fill neck. And you can see here that my oil is basically at the bottom of the fill neck. I'll pull this piece out so you can kind of see where it is. See it in there. Okay, I'm going to put that in and then I'm going to clean off the area of any oil and then we're going to just put the lid back on. Now that I've filled the oil chamber, you can see that the window is completely full and that the knob has been completely tightened so that there's no oil leaking around and I've cleaned the area to make sure no debris gets in there. So it's ready to go. You always want to make sure that you check your oil every time you use the chainsaw. If that oil is low, you need to fill it up. In order to maintain the life of the saw, it's very important that you adjust the chain tension and make sure it's always correct. The tension is correct when you're able to use a gloved hand to pull the chain smoothly around the guide bar. So to do this, number one, remove the battery pack. Number two, wear gloves. Now to check the tension of the chain itself to make sure it's in the proper location along the guide bar, what you want to do is first, you'll notice on the wing nut there's a unlock and a lock position. Basically going to turn the wing nut down and just loosen it a little bit, but don't um, don't take it off uh, because we're just checking the chain tension at this point. Then at that point, when I turn it counterclockwise, you'll notice that the chain starts coming down. See it right there? Uh, when I turn it clockwise, it starts coming up. So what they say to do is to hold the tip and then with a gloved hand, of course, and then you want to turn it clockwise 
until the chain touches the bottom of the bar and once it does then just turn it another quarter of a turn. Then you can come back and lock this up and close it. And then at a point the chain is sitting nicely and when it's in the operational area it should move smoothly. Okay the next thing you want to check is that the chain brake is working and that is this piece here. Again, like I said before, when you pull it forward, it stops the chain from moving. When you put it back, you're in the operational area. So to check that, what you want to do is put your chainsaw on a level surface like this, and most importantly, take the battery out. You do not want the battery in there when you're doing this test. Have the chain break in the stop area and grip the chain here and see if you can move it. Now, I cannot move it here. It's locked in place. But then, when I go to the operational area, which is here, I should be able to move the chain, like you can see there. So that way we know that the chain brake is working. Eventually, you might have to do some service on the guide bar or the chain itself, the drive socket mechanism inside. This is the way that you do it. Again, you want to put the chainsaw on a level surface. Make sure the battery is removed. Then you're going to take this wing nut here and you're going to completely unlock it. Just keep turning it until this whole cover sheet here is loose. Now you can see in mine, there's a lot of dust and debris in there that you want to clean out and also inside the cover as well. You can see it, so that doesn't look good. So we're going to clean all that out right now, but you can see all the components, the spacers, the clips. There's a clip on the outside, that this little black piece here that you can pull off, take out the spacer, and then you can get to the guide bar, take it off, do whatever you need to do. But for now, I'm just going to show you how we kind of clean that out. Okay, looks nice and clean. Now, I'm not going to take this all apart right now, but if you did take it out to clean all of this out, the way that you would do it is once you get the cover off there, you would loosen up the chain tension knob right there so it's very loose. Then there is a little clip right there that you would knock off. There's a spacer right here. There's a sprocket underneath. And then once you pull that out, you'll be able to pull all of this out here. Now, you can see there behind there there is a kind of where the oil is coming through and so since there's oil coming through hitting the chain it's all gunked up so even if I put a vacuum cleaner on this it's not going to come off it's too kind of sticky so you have to kind of clean it by hand I'm going to put a vacuum cleaner on it now just to get anything that's on the top off but I don't expect no much to come off Actually, that's not too bad, but you can see it's pretty well gunked up there, so I'm going to clean up the rest of this by hand. Again, you want to make sure you, your battery is not in when you're doing this. And normally you would take off the entire chain before you would chew this because they are sharp and you could cut yourself if you're doing it the way I'm doing it. Just right now, I'm not going to take it all off. Okay, you can see it's much cleaner. I've gotten most of the gunk out. Now again, you would do this normally taking the whole chain off and I dropped it down a little bit so you can kind of see in there. And you probably can't see this well, but here's a little bit behind so you can see how it is back there. And the, the sprocket and the clip or right over here you can kind of see the sprocket back there that you would normally take that out. The other thing you want to do is to take note of the direction of the chain spikes as well. 
so that when you put it back on, you're going the proper direction as it was originally. But then once you've got it all cleaned out, then you're going to reposition this up so that you're on all these bars properly, and I'll do that now. Now it's very important when you put this chain guard and all this stuff back together, if you notice this little hole there, there's actually a stud that's underneath a little further up that that must come through that hole. So if I pull it back, you'll see it. See it right there? The edge of it right there? When we get this chain in position, it's got to go in that hole. Then you just want to make sure that the chain is properly back on the guide bar. You can do it, you know, before you put it on and make sure it is in all the grooves. It can't be sticking out. It's got to be in all the grooves and then wrapped around the sprocket on the end. You want to make sure that stud is also coming through. That will adjust the uh, um, chain later on. So you want to make sure that that stud is showing through just like that, okay? And then at that point, you can put the cover back on. Now on the cover, you'll notice there's a little metal clip there and that goes into this little red opening spot there and then this bar here this little open space here attaches to this little metal piece there so you want to make sure that all goes in nice and clean wing nut down but don't have to screw it too tight at this stage then you want to go back to the tension routine just to make sure you've got it right okay I think that looks good okay then we'll do the final test pull this back hold in the trigger lock pull the thing Everything's working good. Now the manual that you get with the chainsaw or you can download from the internet does show you how to properly use the chainsaw as far as cutting down trees or pruning limbs, things like that. So you can see that it does nicely tell you what to do. That's the overview of the Toro PowerPlex 14 chainsaw. Thank you for watching.